Hello and good evening. And it's time for Parish Prayers and Beyond. Oh, Merry Christmas. I hope that things are going well for you this week. I know it's crazy. Uh, I, I hope that you're making it okay. Some of us have turned from being Americans uh, into Russians. Uh, we're just rushing everywhere. Okay, that was weak. Uh, anyway, <laughs> some of us are excited about Christmas. Uh, some of us are uh, dealing with a great loss uh, this year. Uh, that's very hard. Uh, some of us seem to have it all together on the outside, at least on the outside. Christmas is coming. Wherever you are when it comes to Christmas, whatever is going on in your life, when it comes to Christmas, I want you to consider something uh, this evening. <laughs> Listen to this verse from John chapter 1, verse 14. The Bible says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Think about that. God, as a man, came to earth in the form of Jesus. God became one of us not to see what it was like to be a human. God became one of us so that we would know that He knows what it's like to be human. He did it so that He could identify with us. He is not some remote God far away from us. He is not so far removed from us that He does not care about us. He dwelt among us. He was here on this earth. All those who were alive at that time observed Him. The evangelist uh, John is saying that the Word becoming flesh and living among us is like God tabernacling among the tribes of Israel, or in other words, the presence of God was localized in Jesus, the incarnate Word. It seems odd. I mean, you are human. Uh, you may choose to identify as a dog or a bird, but you are human. There's nothing that can change that. If God is God and He is human, then we have a problem. I mean, you can't be both. You can't be two things at once. Or can you? That's assuming that we know everything there is to know about God, and we don't. Since we do not know everything there is to know about God, it is certainly possible that what the Bible has stated is true. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Verse 14 also says that He was full of grace. Uh, it, it also says we beheld His glory. That glory that the people observed was the glory of God in Christ. But he goes on to say that He was full of grace and truth. The expression grace and truth is found only twice in the New Testament, here and in verse 17. John uses the word grace to describe how giving Jesus was. He gave to undeserving people. We see His giving attitude at the wedding in Cana, where He turned the water into wine. We see it, we see it where the government official, uh, His Son, is healed. We see it when the lame man at the pool of Bethesda walks. We see it at the feeding of the 5,000 and when He brings Lazarus back to life. We especially see it when Jesus goes to the cross and lays down his life for his people. John also uses the word truth. The actual Greek word he uses has the, re the root meaning of reliability. God is reliable in his words and actions. This is also true of Christ. Jesus, uh, the word, is reliable and truthful. Where are you when it comes to God becoming man? It's one thing to think of a baby surrounded by hay and animals and laying in a manger, but uh, are you ready to deal with the reality of God living among us? Revealing Himself to us? 
He is here. He is here revealing Himself to us through nature, through His mighty acts, and most importantly, through His children. My prayer is that you are helping others to know who Jesus is through how you live, through how you treat others, through how you walk on this earth. After a few moments, you'll see some announcements. I want to invite you personally to our Christmas Eve service. It begins at 6 p.m. Actually, it begins at 5.30. The bells will ring, and then at 6, the service will begin. So you can come in anytime uh, between uh, 5 and uh, 6. So join us on Christmas Eve for our special Christmas service. Let me pray with you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love and for your grace. But Father, we thank you for sending your Son, for becoming like us, so that we would know that you understand. You understand who we are. You understand what we go through. You understand how we feel. You understand who we are. Father, this Christmas I pray that we will truly Experience your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As always, there will be a time of prayer with uh, some prayer requests on the screen. We invite you to join us in those. May I wish you a very happy Christmas this year. And may the new year bring, may the new year bring peace. May the new year bring peace in our hearts, all of us. Until next year, take care and remember, God loves you very much.